Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. Today, Nikki Chang Paulus is training us on how to amplify our business results by mastering three secrets. Nikki, I've got a couple of questions that will help us to get to know you at a more personal level. The first question is this, outside your business activities, what do you enjoy doing? Okay, it's gonna be tricky while I let people in. <laughs> into I'll, the room. I'll, I'll take over the admit while you answer these questions. Excellent, thank you. Well, one of the things that my husband and I love to do is to travel. And uh, I was uh, speaking with somebody earlier today and uh, they asked me, where was I when the COVID hit? And we were literally on the other side of the world in Chile. So what I enjoy doing is not only traveling, but I'm also a photographer and a fine art photographer. I used to be the president of the Foothills Camera Club. So photography is something that's really close to my heart. And uh, if you follow me on social media, you'll notice that on Mondays, I always have a motivational Monday post and if you look at it very carefully the motivational Monday post always features some of my photography so if you're looking for inspirational images uh, please check it out and I also put together a yearly calendar that features my photography so that's what I love to do is to travel and feature my photography um, and I love to incorporate it as part of my business even though it has nothing to do with my business. <laughs> I didn't know you had such a talent. Question number two, uh, tell us one thing that most people don't know about you. Okay. Um, as you know, photography is really close to my heart. Um, most people don't know that on top of my fine art photography is I also used to freelance for a rock magazine. So I would be one of those photographers in front of the stage with the media taking pictures uh, at rock concerts. And I was really fortunate enough that in 2016, I was one of the accredited photographers at the 2016 Juno Awards in Calgary. You know, when the, um, when the winners come off the stage and they're holding on their trophy, I was in the back taking their pictures. So that was really fun and exciting for me. That's something that not a lot of people know about. <laughs> so you, you guys are, know the secret. <laughs> you are indeed a dark horse. Wonderful. <laughs> uh, participants, whenever, uh, Nikki, back to you for the admit. Uh, participants, if you have any questions, type them into the chat and about every 10 minutes in a batch, I'll pose them to Nikki during her talk. Uh, you're going to be sent a link to the recording of this talk in a few hours, but I nevertheless encourage you to take notes uh, because the very act of taking notes is going to increase what you absorb by as much as 30%. Nikki, are you ready to rock the stage? I am, I just need to share my screen. So let me make sure. I'm going uh, to spotlight you. Okay. And then you share screen. Uh, can you guys see me? We can see you or perfectly. See the, see the, okay, hang on. I gotta move some things around because it moved on me. Uh, so you guys can see the real screen, not my notes, right? <laughs> <laughs> we can see only your real screen. Excellent. Thank you very much. So, Roger, I want to thank you for welcoming me uh, to the Vancouver Business Network. And today we're really going to be focusing on amplifying your business results by mastering these secrets. So what we're going to be going through is today we will unlock the key to sales and marketing success. And you know a lot of people struggle with sales and marketing, so we will be going over that. And I'm also going to be uncovering the three biggest mistakes that business owners need to be able to avoid to be able to take their business to the next level. And lastly, we're also going to learn techniques to discover how to best spend your time and money. So you guys ready to get going? We're going to get started now. So most business owners, um, 
they always start off with a dream. This is a dream to have this incredible business and to be able to make an impact on somebody's life. And they want to be able to, uh, some of them even want to go global. Now, some of the key reasons that business owners start a business is they want that flexible schedule. I know there are many parents out there, they want to be home when the kids get home from school. So they want that flexibility. They also may want that flexibility to have more travel time like I do um, and spend it with the family. And these are one of some of the reasons that uh, people start a business. And guess what? We want to have fun. We don't want to be tied to our business. We want to be able to have fun. And also is we want to make money. I know a lot of business owners have shared with me is they want the money to go into their pockets. They don't want it to go into a company's pockets, which is one of the reasons why they do start a business. Then reality sets it. And the reality is, is they recognize that even though they have all these skills that uh, um, with their craft, that is there is so much to learn about business because that's not something they learned when they uh, learned their skill, whatever that skill was. And then they're fine that they're working long hours and they're not able to get everything done. Um, they've also invested and uh, they're not getting the results that they would like to get. Now, one of my clients came up to me and they said, you know what, Nikki, I spent $2,000 on SEO to get clicks to my website. And I got zero clients. These unfortunately are common stories. People have spent money on marketing campaigns and they're not getting results. So when we hear statistics like 50% of business owners don't make it to five years, it's really disheartening. However, you need to understand that these are not only business, uh, problems for small business owners, these are also challenges for the corporate world. And this was my world for 25 years was in the corporate world. So I started my career at Hewlett Packard, where I was dis displacing IBM mainframes with corporate business servers. And I was, um, I was top of my uh, game in the sales side. And then by the time I left 25 years later, I was with an oil and gas service company where I was managing a team of 35 to 50 people and looking at the organization in terms of um, in terms of getting um, the processes in place and ultimately making profit within the business. And then one day I realized that, you know what? I'd been in here for 25 years. It was time for a change. So I literally walked out the door and retired until six months afterwards, I was having coffee with a colleague and they said to me, they said, Nikki, I got laid off. I want to take the severance package and I want to start a business. I know exactly what I want to start. Uh, I, I know exactly what business I want to start, but I have no clue how to start a business. And you have all this business experience. And, his, and he said, will you help me? And guess what? My exact words to him were, I've got nothing better to do with my time. Sure. Why not? <laughs> and then two months later, somebody else came up to me and said, Nikki, I've been in business for a couple of years now, and I'm really struggling to attract the type of clients that I really want to work with. Will you help me? And that's when I stood back and it was like the heavens parted and the angels started singing. And this is right around the time they go hallelujah in the background. I knew that this was where I was supposed to be and that the 25 years of business knowledge that I had from the corporate world was not common knowledge among the small business community. So what do I do today? Uh, I do a lot of speaking at events. It used to be live, but now it's all online. And I was also won two awards. Uh, I won Entrepreneur of the Year, and I also won Best New Business Venture in 2018. And also in 2018, I wrote a book called, uh, I wrote a book called Putting the Pieces Together, Your Survival Guide to the First Five Years in Business.
And today, I also have a team of two other business strategists. So the three of us are here on a mission to increase the chances of success for the small business community. So my goal here today is to show you the secrets that will amplify your business. My promise to you is that um, I will try to share with you as much information as possible during this short time. And so I want you to do take that pen and paper that Roger had suggested and do take notes because I am somebody who is known for having no fluff and giving you really concrete information. And I've also been known to have a very different perspective on these topics that we're going to be talking about today. So let's get started. Uh, I want you to imagine having a roadmap to, that will show you the steps to success. Now, I want you to think about it. Now, for me, every time I go to Costco or you know anywhere, it doesn't matter that I've been there a thousand times before. I will still take my phone and I will put the location into Google Maps. And what happens in Google Maps is it will tell me the number of different ways to get to that location. Now, the thing is, is if you if you're like me, I hate sitting in traffic and you guys are in Vancouver. I'm in Calgary, so probably less traffic problems and you guys probably have it more. So you can probably relate a lot better to say that, yes, we want to find the fastest way there. Now, as small business owners, it's the same thing with our business. We do not want to be taking the long way around. So what I'm going to be talking about in more detail today are the phases of a business, the three biggest mistakes that business owners make that prevent them from taking their business to the next level. And I'm also going to be showing you some of the potential steps you have to move forward. So let's us get started. Um, I'll share with you that a lot of business owners have confided in me that one of the biggest causes for stress and anxiety is not knowing what they don't know. So what I want to do is spend some time to go over the business journey. And the business journey, once you have a better understanding of what the business journey uh, is, it will make it a lot less intimidating for you. So let's get started. Um, we're get, everything starts with sales and marketing. Because guess what? If you don't have any sales, you really don't have a business. And it's during this stage where we're trying to get the word out there saying, I'm open for business and, um, you know, come see me over here and come buy my product. That's what we're really focusing in the sales and marketing stage. And during the sales and marketing stage, we're starting to build momentum and people are starting to get to know who we are. Until one morning, you're going to wake up. And you're going to go, oh, crap, I can't keep up. There's too much going on. I, I'm having troubles uh, answering all the emails. There's too many calls coming in. Well, that's a great place to be because you have moved into the second phase of business. And that second phase is really about the operational structure. It's during this phase where we're really focusing on building a team. You're not a solopreneur. You cannot do everything uh, by yourself on your own anymore. The other thing is, is you're building systems in your business so you can get consistent results. And the third thing is you might be incorporating automation into your business. So it's so during this operational stage, we're really about building that foundation for your business to grow and scale. Now, the third phase of business is really about profitability. Are you making money in the first two phases? Absolutely, you're making money. However, the money that you're making in the first two phases is a lot of it is being reinvested into that business so you can build that strong foundation. And when we get to this third profitability phase, the foundation is already there. And what you're finding is now you can go on vacation, have your business run on its own. You can take whatever you're making with your business, put it into, um, you put it into the kids' education fund, or it might be into your retirement fund. And that's a great place to be in terms of the profitability stage. And then the last phase is about growth. 
And in this last phase of growth is the whole cycle starts all over again, except the second time around what's happening is in this growth phase is you might be um, adding new products to your, uh, to your service offering, to your offerings. Uh, you might be going into new markets. Who knows? You might even want to go global during this phase. So this growth phase, because it, you've gone through it before, it's going to go much faster. You have the team in place. You have the experience. You've got uh, a You've got clients that already know you and can have uh, can attest to what you can do, and you already have the systems in place. It might need some fine tuning and tweaking, but that's fine. It's all there. So this growth stage and the whole cycle starts all over again. Now, what I want to share with you is most people say, you know, everybody's heard that saying, the first five years in business are critical. So my question to you. Is it really five years? How many years does it take to go through this process? And I will share with you that I have had clients who have been in business for 25 years and they're still in the second phase of their business. In fact, that they are so stuck in their business that it like the business is running them because they don't have the systems in place. They're doing everything themselves. They're busy, they've got sales coming in, but they're having troubles um, stepping themselves away from it. I had one client when I asked him, I said, what do you do when you go on vacation? And his exact words were, I tell my team not to answer the phone. Well, that's not the way to run a business. So it's really important to understand these phases. And just because it says five years doesn't necessarily mean you're past that, uh, that zone. So let's move on. Um, so most of this talk, I'm really going to be focusing on the sales, uh, the first two phases, the sales and marketing and the operational structure. If you are in the third or fourth phase of your business, trust me, I'm sure you will still be able to take something out of this presentation because I've been known to have a very different perspective on things. So let's move on. What we're going to do is we're going to move on to sales and marketing. And I'm going to start off by sharing the first secret with you because I did promise you three secrets. So this is the first secret that we're going to share. And that is the key. This is the key to getting more clients. Now, when we look at sales and marketing, people ask me, uh, you know, when, when I share it with people, if you do all the sales and marketing, yes, you will get results. However, if you really want to optimize your results, then you really need this third missing piece. And this third missing piece is really around a strong marketing message. And what I'm going to do to better illustrate the strong marketing message is I want to take you through a, um, a, a, an example. And I'm going to take you back to your elementary school days. <laughs> yes, elementary school. Do you remember elementary school? We're going to look at the solar system. And the way we're going to look at the solar system, we all know that the sun is at the center of the solar system. And the planets rotate around the sun. So I want you to think about this really carefully. If you think about it, if something happened to the sun, would you not agree with me that it would affect how the planets rotate around the sun. And based on that premise, this is where we're gonna go into our business solar system. So our business solar system is really around three key planets. And we're gonna be going over this in way more detail. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by looking at the sun, which is at the center. And the sun is represented by our target market, okay? So when we change our target market, I'm gonna show you how that affects the three other planets. Now, the first planet we're gonna look at is the marketing message. So let's take a look at the marketing message. And I'm gonna give you an example. And the example I'm gonna give you is a massage therapist. A massage therapist gives massage services, massage therapy services perfectly logical. 
let's say this massage therapist decides she wants to target stay-at-home moms. Now, in her messaging to stay-at-home moms, she might say, you know what? Come get away from the kids so you can relax and de-stress so you can go back to being that best mom possible. Now, if you were a mom, wouldn't that attract you? I know for me, because with kids running around, this is really zen. This is where I want to be right now for a couple of hours just to get away. However, this massage therapist decides she also wants to target seniors. Now, if you think about it, the message that she had given to stay-at-home moms is very different than what she gives to seniors because seniors don't really care about that. What seniors care about is, hey, I can come help you remove some of your pain, make your joints looser so you have more mobility, so you can get back to living life and enjoying it. And sometimes even spending time with your grandkids without worrying about that pain. Now, if you think about it, that message is resonating with a very different crowd. So it's really important. So now you can see how important it is for that, that, how that target market changes that message. It's the same service, different message to a different audience. And that's your marketing message. So let's move on to the second, um, the second uh, planet. And the second planet is about product strategy. This is how you deliver your product and service to your target market. So let's go back to the stay-at-home mom. So for the stay-at-home mom, this massage therapist might decide they'll rent a room at a, at a spa. And at the spa, she might have, you know, the lights are dim, the music is low and zen. There might be a waterfall in the background. Really attractive to the stay-at-home mom. Now, let's go back to the seniors. Would this be attractive to them? No, they're having troubles moving around. Exactly. So what we're going to do is that massage therapist might decide invest in a folding table, the most portable tables, and they're going to do mobile services, or she might have a room at a senior's home to be able to help them. The exact same service, massage therapy services, but a very different delivery method. And that is your product strategy. And then the third planet that we're looking at is your marketing strategy. Now, in your marketing strategy, let's go back to the stay-at-home mom. So she might, this massage therapist might advertise her services at play groups, community centers, anywhere where kids hang out and parents hang out, right? That's where she's going to advertise. Is that going to work for the senior? Absolutely not. So the senior, she might decide, you know what? They have a bulletin board at the pharmacy, and seniors tend to go to the pharmacy a lot for prescription. So let's put an ad up at the bulletin board. Why not? Or that massage therapist might decide, you know what? Let's uh, target the kids of the stay at home uh, of the sorry, the kids of the seniors. So she might do a LinkedIn campaign um, for the people, the professionals who are dealing with the aging parents. And that is how you can see how the marketing strategy changes as your target market changes. So now you can see how everything all fits together. So your target market is absolutely key to everything. Now I'll show you some statistics. 70% of consumers say that they only engage with marketing messages that are customized to their specific interests. So if you're too generic, like you help people lose weight, it's not going to uh, attract the type of people that you want to work with. Now, the next question is, can you attract attention in one minute? Now, I'll, I'm gonna share a case study with you. Meet Paige Stevenson. She's actually out of the Vancouver area. And she had shared with me, she said, Nikki, I have been going to the same event every, you know, for many years now, every month, giving my 60 second pitch, and I've gotten no results from networking. So what we did was we really went deeper into her, her target market to identify something that was more in alignment with who she was. And then what we did was we also 
uh, we also uh, changed her pitch. And then she went to a, the networking event again. And guess what? She came back to me that evening and she picked up the phone and she said, you know what, Nikki? This is the first time they asked me for my business card. It was incredible because if you have a very good, well-crafted 60 second pitch, you will attract the people uh, to uh, that they will naturally be attracted to you. So instead of handing out business cards, they're going to come be coming up to you and say, call me. So instead of grabbing all those um, contact information and chat boxes, again, they're going to say they're going to be asking for your information. So I want you to think about imagine that instead of doing three or four follow up calls, you're getting your message across in only one meeting. What is that worth to you? So let's move on to the next phase. Uh, and I'm going to show you the phases of sales and marketing. And the phases of sales and marketing is really around an idea. Everything starts with an idea. You have an idea. And then what you're going to do is you're going to test the idea. Nikki, can, you, have, can you take a couple of questions before you move into this, this next portion? Absolutely. Sure. So the first question is from Edward, and Edward wants to know the difference between sales and marketing. The difference between sales and marketing, absolutely. So I like to use the fishing analogy. So a fisherman, um, um, the goal is to get the fish in the boat. Would you agree with me on that, right? Um, so when the fisherman throws, uh, puts the bait on the end of the hook and throws it into the water, the goal of that is to attract the fish. That is the equivalent to marketing, is attracting people to whatever it is you want to attract them to. So it could be a website, it could be you know, a landing page, you know, it could be a whole bunch of things that you're attracting them to. Once the fish takes a bite onto the hook, and your goal as the fisherman is now to reel it in. You can't go too fast and you can't go too slow or else the fish is gonna jump off the hook. That process, once that fish has taken the hook, uh, hook, is the equivalent to the sales process. So the minute somebody holds out their hand and you say, nice to meet you, or they've clicked on that contact us button and now you're corresponding with them, that is the sales process. Is that helpful? Yes, question from Cindy. How do you effectively market real estate services during this pandemic, especially in the first year of your business? In your first year, I would say for a lot of realtors, um, if Vancouver is exactly like Calgary, there are a ton of realtors out there. The key is to be able to differentiate yourself from the competitors. Um, so as an example, you might specialize in maybe working with young families buying their first home or specializing in condominiums or you know, specializing in acreages. Now, a lot of people think that if I specialize, I'm going to lose out on something. Well, you're not. Because if somebody comes to you that is outside of that specialty, they will, you're not going to say no to them. You're still going to do business with them. So it's, it's just a matter of how you're going to present yourself. And how you present yourself in that target market will change. Is It's about identifying which one makes the most sense for you. Just as an example, somebody said to me, you know what, I want to target divorced women. And I looked at them and I said, have you ever been divorced? And she said, no. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> these people are going to have a hard time relating to you. So it's a matter of identifying a target market that really makes the most sense. And we go through that in a lot of detail in our program, because this is the one area that people struggle with most. So I don't know if I completely answered it, but... <laughs> Awad wants to know what you think about accelerator programs. It depends on what you define as an accelerator program. Um, for me, when it comes to the target market and really getting that messaging down, it's you can't accelerate it. It's something that takes time to nurture and test. If you fast track it, you can easily go off track. And what I, and so, and when you're talking about accelerator programs, I can't really comment because different accelerator programs are different. So it's really hard to say, it depends on what their scope is. Does that kind of make sense? 
Uh, Meg wants to know how much marketing analysis is needed to craft the appropriate marketing message. Well, we're gonna, why don't I, I can answer that one with this next slide when, when I get into here. Okay, no further questions. Okay, so let's get, let's go into this. So when we're testing, you know, we start off with an idea and then you're going to test the idea. Now, the analogy, the, the example I want to give you is one of my clients. She designed this business and she says, this is what I want the business to look like. She just created the framework, a high level framework. And uh, I said, okay, let's go out and test the market. And she went to a convention with hundreds of her target market. And I said, you need to ask them this, this, and this. So I gave her a set of questions to ask. And she came back a week later and she picked up the phone and she called me and she says, Nikki, they don't want to pay for what I have to offer. And I looked at her and I said, it's better finding out now than after you've devoted two years of your life to find out they don't want to pay for it. So this testing process is really important. You don't want to rush it. So when they say accelerator programs and say, okay, I'm going to pick a target market of my hat. The thing is, is you have to test it. You need to make sure that this is what people want. And so that's the first, uh, first two stages of sales and marketing. And then the third stage is really about preliminary growth. It's during this stage where you're starting to build momentum with your, um, with your program or your sales. Um, and this is where the key to preliminary growth is about getting the testimonials and knowing where you shine best. So the way I like to describe it, so the, identifying the target market is really in the test, the idea and the testing phase. And if it's not tested properly, what will happen is you're going to go back to the drawing board and adjust the target market until you get it right. And what will happen is once you've got the, uh, the target market identified, then you create the messaging and the foundational elements. So there's a bunch of elements that go behind this. And once you've got those two things together, then you're doing preliminary marketing strategy. So you might be doing networking, you might be doing social media, and you might have a website. Now, most people, a lot of people, when they're starting a business, they tend to start here. The problem is, is they wonder why they're not getting results because they're spending uh, a lot of dollars in this area. It could be on a website, like don't spend $5,000 on a website at this point, because the question is, is how clear are you with your target market and your messaging? So if your target market and your messaging changes, guess what? It changes everything else. Now, I'll show you another statistic. 55% of marketers, and these are marketing companies that help people create their marketing strategy, they don't feel they have sufficient customer data to implement effective personalization. And what this typically means is people come to them, they don't have their target market clear, they don't have their messaging clear. And without those two pieces, it's very difficult for marketing companies to put together a marketing campaign that will give you effective results. So let's go back to the stages of sales and marketing. So now in that preliminary growth stage, as you're growing and you know, you're putting things into place, what may happen, and I know this has happened to a number of people, is they start off by going in one direction and then it changes. I know at least four businesses who say, this is what my, I want my business to be. And as they do the testing, as they meet more clients and what ends up happening is now their business is completely different. And that's what ended up happening with me. I was one of those people. So, which is why when we get into the fourth phase, is really about branding. A lot of people think, ah, oh, I need a logo. I need the colors and everything like that. The thing is, is if you're not really clear on the direction that you want, the money and investment that you spend in branding may not, uh, it may not relate to the real target market that you've ended up doing. So if you spend the money too early um, to get that logo and get those colors and your target market changes, guess what? A lot of that will need to be rebranded. So I usually tell people, yes, you're going to need something to get started, but don't invest a lot of money. Wait until you're more stable and your solution is more stable and you've got testimonials before you go into the true branding stage. 
And then the fifth and final stage is about explosive growth. It's really during this stage where paid marketing strategies really pay out. So one of the biggest mistakes is people pay for, for um, let's say Facebook ads and they're not getting results. And the reason they're not getting results is their messaging is not strong and they're still, they're still kind of wishy-washy on a lot of different areas. So that is really uh, the sales and marketing stage that we're going to look at today. And so I'm going to move on to the operational structure stage. Now, operational structure, I'm going to give you, this is secret number two. This is probably one of the most common things that people don't understand when they're looking at, at um, their business is I had a client that came to me and he literally built a multi-million dollar business on his own in two years in retail. Incredible success story. And he came to me, he says, uh, my manufacturer wants me to do more marketing and uh, so we can get more sales. And I looked at him and I said, okay, fine, that's fine. We can do more marketing to get more sales. But the question is, is if you, you increased your sales by let's say 25%, do you have the capacity to handle the additional volume? And he literally looked at me with the most petrified look on his face and he said, no. So what we did was we took some steps back. So three months, what we did was we identified an individual that he needed to hire. So we hired that individual to manage the operations. We also uh, put in some systems in place because one employee was doing one thing one way and another person was doing some things the other way. And you wonder why they were losing orders in the shop. So that was not good. So what was happening in his particular case is he was building his business on Jenga blocks. Everybody remember this game, <laughs> the Jenga blocks. So what was happening is all he needed was one wrong step and he risked his entire business co coming tumbling down. And that's probably one of the mistakes that people make is when they're building a business is what we want to do is avoid playing whack-a-mole. You don't want to fix one problem to have another problem pop up and then fix that problem and have something else pop up. There are a lot of great strategists, or there are a lot of great marketing people, or not marketing people, but there are a lot of great specialists out there. The problem with specialists is they don't always understand the implications that they may have to the other side of the business. Okay, that is going to conclude my operational structure portion. Now we're going to move on to the three most common mistakes that business owners make that prevent them from taking their business to the next level. Are you ready uh, for a question before you segue? Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, Denise wants to know, what if my product's aim is both two generations, one old and one new? How should we generate our marketing strategy? Okay, without knowing the details of the product, the problem is, is the messaging that you're giving to the young won't appeal to the old. So what you might want to do with your marketing strategy is you might literally have two different using landing pages to attract them. So you might do a marketing strategy for one demographics, leading them to one landing page that speaks to them and the other demographic goes to a different landing page that speaks to the other demographics. Does that make sense? And that, because one message, it's very difficult to have one message that catches all. Nikki, uh, uh, Rochelle needs you to summarize secret number two in one sentence. Take a holistic view of your business and don't look at it in chunks and make sure you understand the impact your decisions are making on the other parts of your organization. Thank you, no further questions. <laughs> you sound like a judge <laughs> or <laughs> like, okay, never mind. Okay, so let's move on to the three most common uh, business mistakes that business owners make that prevent them from taking their business to the next level. So I like to work backwards. So we're gonna start off with mistake number three. And mistake number three is not having a strategy or a plan. Now, if you think about it very carefully, if you're going for a bank loan or any type of financing, the first thing they're going to ask for is a business plan. 
Now, the thing is, is um, even if you don't need to go to, uh, for financing, it's still a good idea to have some type of a plan. Because earlier I had mentioned to you is when we're building the roadmap for our business, we really don't want to be taking the long way around. And I'm sure everybody would agree with me on that one. We want the fastest way to get to where we wanna go. So when we're looking at the fastest way to want, where we wanna go is that's where we would need, need to put this. Now, back to that analogy where that, um, or that story I was sharing with you earlier about the client who spent $2,000 on SEO to get clicks to the website and got zero clients. So he asked me, he says, what did I do wrong? So what I did was we went onto the website and I looked at his website and I said, okay, I see what's happening here. Your website tells me what you do, but your website doesn't, know, doesn't tell me what you can do for me and why I should pick up the phone and call you. So that person you spent $2,000 with to get clicks to the website did exactly what they said they would do is they got you clicks to the website. But because the website doesn't convert was not their fault. So what you did, what he did at that time was he did things in the wrong order. And um, so what, what we do is a lot of um, people come to me and they say, you know what, there's way too much information out there. Okay, and they're getting information overload. And then they have somebody say, you know what, I had great success with and it might fill in the blank, it might be Facebook ads, or it might be Instagram, or it might be Twitter, who knows. And then you go try it. And you're going, oh, crap, and I'm not getting results. And so the problem is, is there's so much information out there is what you should you be working on. The way I like to describe it is these are tools. These are like tools in your toolbox. So they're showing you, you know, how to use the power saw, they're showing you how to use the hammer, and they're showing you how to use the screwdriver. If the ultimate goal is to build your dream home, and in this case, it's a business, would you not agree with me? We're going to need the blueprints. And the blueprint is going to tell us exactly what we need to use when. And the other thing the blueprint is going to tell us is it's going to tell us we're going to need to put the plumbing in before we put the walls up. Um, so going back to what I had talked about earlier, the phases of sales and marketing, is you want to make sure that you have clearly defined your target market and the foundational elements before you start doing your marketing strategy or investing too much into your marketing strategy. Because as you're testing, you're going to go out and you're going to come back out and back until you get it just right. Now, this is uh, Kelty and Stan Masters. They have worked with a number of coaches in the past, but what they recognized when they started working with me is what they really needed was not necessarily the coaching. What they were really needing for their business were the strategies. And these were custom strategies designed for their specific scenario. And once they had identified that, it made a huge impact on them moving forward with their business. Okay, now mistake number two, uh, that the second biggest mistake that business owners make that prevent them from taking their business to the next level is not having systems that give them consistent results. Now, let's look at fast food restaurants. Did you notice that it doesn't matter which location you go to for that franchise? You're going to get the food was always similar and the service is always similar. And the reason is, is because when you purchase the franchise, guess what? The, they give you the operations manual right then and there. They said, this is how you're going to do this. This is how you're going to cook it. This is going to be how you greet your clients. This is how you do everything. Guess what? As a business owner, we don't have that luxury. So we need to build those systems ourselves. Now, when we see that over 50% of businesses owners don't make it to five years, let's look at why uh, the ones that fail is that 82% of business failures is due to poor cash flow management. 
Now, this is secret number three. This is the one area out of all the business owners that I work with. This is the one that seems to be missing in a lot of in a lot of businesses. And the third, so the third secret is really around this one area that I'm going to describe to you. Um, I'm going to start off. This is a um, we're going to look at um, medicine. OK, we're going to look at health. Um, if you're trying to lose weight or if you're diabetic or if you have high blood pressure, would you not agree with me that you need to continually measure where your levels are at? So if you're diabetic and your blood sugar changes, you know exactly what to do if that level changes. So you adjust your eating. So if your weight goes what you're going to do is eat less the next day. Or if your blood pressure goes up, there goes the coffee, right? <laughs> Let's remove the coffee. Um, so what you're doing is you're making decisions based on what you're measuring. Now, the thing is, is with um, small businesses, is this is one area they don't measure. Now, a lot of business owners that I meet is this is what their receipts are like is once a year, they take their receipts to the accountant and the accountant goes, congratulations, you made money this year, or I'm sorry, you didn't make money. However, if you continually monitor your situation and you don't wait until the end of the year, you can easily course adjust. And uh, so if you see things starting to stray off and your spending go up, you can quickly recover by maybe watching what you spend the following month. So these, this is one of the real biggest keys that a lot of business owners um, don't, don't look at. So it's more than just looking at your financials and your profit loss statements. Yes, these are very important. However, we can look at it in different ways. We can look at it in marketing campaigns. Is if we see that in this example, um, networking event number one brings in 32% of our revenue are we going to renew our membership? Absolutely. John Doe brings in 12% of our revenue. John's getting a huge honking gift basket at Christmas time because we want John to continue referring business to us. So it's being able to look at your data in a different way to be able to make decisions. And that's how you're going to move ahead with your business. And it'll also reduce your stress and it'll show you where you should be spending your time and money. And it helps you make your, those business decisions. This is Brett Wilson. Just because something works doesn't mean it can't be better. So if you're tracking your operations, how can you do things faster and smarter? This is Joanne Neuenduck. And what she said was she was tracking her numbers, but she didn't recognize that she wasn't using them to the level that she could. So she was just doing her profit loss, and now she's, she's analyzing it in a completely different way. Now, this is Colin Powell, and he says that there are no secrets to success. It is the result of preparation, hard work, and learning from failure. Now, the number one mistake that business owners make that prevent them from taking their business to the next level is not having the right team to support you. Now, um, I, I want to share this story. This story is really around um, uh, a mother is teaching her daughter how to make roast beef. And she says, little Susie, I'm going to show you the exact same way my mother taught me. We're going to take the roast. We're going to chop off the two ends. We're going to stick it in the pan and we're going to stick it in the oven. And little Susie goes, mommy, why do we chop off the two ends? And the mother goes, I don't know. That's the way grandma taught me. So let's give grandma a call. So she gets grandma on the phone. She says, grandma, I'm teaching your granddaughter, little Susie, how to make roast beef. And I'm showing her exactly the way you taught me how to do this. She says, I'm taking the roast, chopping off the two ends, sticking it in the pan and sticking it in the oven. And she says, why do we chop off the two ends? And grandma starts laughing. And she says, that's so it fits in the pan. So the thing is, just because we've been doing things the same way over and over again, um, doesn't mean that the circumstances haven't changed. And the other molar of the story is it takes somebody like little Susie, another set of eyes to be able to see things that we might not be able to see because we're too close to it. Now, an author never edits its work because uh, if you wrote it, you, it's really difficult to proofread your own work. 
Um, it also allows you to see your uh, look at things in different dimensions. Now, in corporate, in large businesses, they have the luxury of having a board of directors. Now, think about the, those board of directors. A lot of times, well, those board of directors are not in your same company, but those board of directors are typically from different companies and they're also from different industries. And the reason for that is so they can give a different perspective to, um, to the company on how they can improve. Now, this is Helen Wood, and what she said is, the way she likes to describe it, she says, Nikki and her team gave her company a really good sh shakeup, tore it apart, and built a business that she was really proud of. And we were able to nearly double her income in one year, just by giving her a different perspective on her business. Now, I know I've given you a lot of information, and the goal is really to be able to get out of working those long hours and knowing that there's so much to learn and so much to invest in not getting those results to really being able for you to live your dream of helping others and making that global impact. So I want you to imagine having a step-by-step -step roadmap that will give you the confidence to know that you are on a reasonable path. So as my gift for you for being here today is the business toolkit. And in the business toolkit is I've got uh, over 101 marketing ideas for you to get more sales. I've also got five steps to help you promote your masterclass or webinar or whatever event you can apply it to. And I'm gonna show you those five steps. And I'm also going to include the procrastination to productive. It's how to get more done with less stress. And that is my gift to you, which is the business toolkit. And as an extra gift, because there's so much information here and you're probably wondering how to apply all of this, is my gift to you is the first 10 people um, will also get a breakthrough business strategy session with one of our strategists. Now, what this session is, is this is a one-on-one -on -one session that is an hour long, where we'll look at where you're at with your business and identify where, where you wanna go with your business. We'll look at some of the key challenges you have and help you identify what some of the potential next steps are for you. And all of this is our gift to you. And to uh, get access to this gift is you just go to ncpconsulting.net slash ncpgift. And you will have access to that information. You will get an email with all the downloads. And all you have to do is book your breakthrough business strategy session with the strategist. Um, next, you might say, you know what? Um, how do I build that team, get access to the resources that I need to build my business? And which is why I've also included as one of the offers I have for you is the NetCP Group Collaboration Program. This is the only completely customized program designed for business owners to easily get access to experts now. So imagine having your little team to your team that you can ask questions to. NetCP. NetCP stands for Network, Collaborate and Profit. I'm a strong believer that if you network and you collaborate and you're in a collaborative environment that everyone will ultimately profit. And besides, it was the only acronym that I can think of that uses my initials, which is the name of the company. So remember NetCP, Network, Collaborate and Profit. What is this program? What this program is, is three monthly group calls with the experts. So it's not one group call, it is three monthly group calls. And the first group call is with myself where we're talking about general business and marketing. So in this in these sessions, these are, com these are uh, collaborative sessions. So if you're looking at your 60 second pitch and you're saying, I don't know if it's resonating with people, you bring the pitch to the group and we will tell you in a nice safe environment, you know what? Those, that word doesn't quite um, 
it's it's not doing it for me. I think it could be, you know, you could come up with a better word or, you know what, we love this part, but maybe improve on that part. We also help people with stuff like titles of their program. We're saying, you know what, does this work with you? And we do a major brainstorming session. So think of this session as a brainstorming session and also gives you an opportunity to ask questions. Some people, they even, they love to come to these things, even if they don't have a question, um, is they like to hear from others others and because they're learning from others. So that is the first group call. So I designed these group calls based on the needs that most small business owners have. So the second group call is with a local boy for the Vancouver area or in Abbotsford is Matthew McGregor. Some of you may know him. He is a technology and digital marketing whiz kid. And he knows it's like, he's not just a specialist in one specific area, is he has such a broad range of knowledge when it comes to technology and digital marketing. That's why I invited him to be part of this group. And he will answer questions on technology and digital marketing. And I will also share with you what I love about Matthew is he speaks in English. You know how some of those tech people, they're talking and it like goes way over your head. Matthew speaks in a way that people understand. And once a month, he hosts a tech call where you can ask him questions. And then the third person is Catherine Sakely Stevens with the Networking Web. And she has been in the industry for over 25 years and her area of specialty is really about social media. She is a social media strategist. So that's where you would ask questions like, what should I be posting on, on uh, the different social media platforms? How often should I post? Which platform should I be on? And she can also help in terms of answering questions on the media side. So what this program includes is access to all three of us three times a month. So one month, each person has their own day um, for this program. So, and guess what? All the calls are on Zoom, so it doesn't really matter where you're at. Uh, you'll be able to access these calls. Now, the, the benefits of this program, it's going to save you time and money because you're going to have access and guidance from the experts. So you can ask them specific questions about your scenario. And uh, you'll also reduce your stress and be confident that testing the ideas and getting honest feedback from your peers. And that is the key, is this is an environment and everybody I found has, is helping each other. Um, and the other thing is being supported by a community of small business owners. Now, the NetCP group collaboration program is th three monthly calls, and you're going to get uh, three months um, you're going to get three months, you're going to get three months of worth of calls for $2.99. That's how much it's worth. And but for this, for the Vancouver Business Network, you will have access to three months for $1.97. And you're going to have access to ask these people questions. Now, um, in order to get access to this um, promotion, is email me directly at nikki at ncpconsulting.net and we will get you set up. And as I mentioned, this is three months of three monthly calls. So this is Dorothy Turek and she is part of the program and she says she has spent a lot of money and this has been one of the, uh, has been the one that has really clarified what she needed to do and understanding why. And she really needed to understand why. And it's not just me, it's the entire team that I've put together for this. And so she says it's the best bang for her buck. I wanna leave you with this. This is, I love this quote, because vision without action is merely a dream. Vision with action can change the world. So let us help you unlock your business potential. So I've put my contact information. So the gift has the first link, which is ncpconsulting.net slash ncpgift. And then you can connect with me um, when you are ready to sign up for that program um, with access to the experts to answer your questions for three months. So now I'm going to open it up to more questions. <laughs> okay, we've got a couple of questions. Uh, I'm a realtor in Vancouver. 
Can you help me? <laughs> That's a loaded question. <laughs> In what area are we talking about? Is that the same first realtor? Yeah, I'm a realtor yeah. in Greater Vancouver. You are from Calgary. Will your service help me? Absolutely, because it's um, it's it's really about putting together the strategy. Now, I don't know the name of the person who uh, asked that question, but I'm going to invite you to sign up for the Breakthrough Business Strategy Session, because in the Breakthrough Business Strategy Session, we're going to look at your scenario specifically, and we're going to see whether it is a right fit for not. May might not be the right fit. So um, this is a, our gift to you. And I would say take advantage of it and you never know what will come out of it. Next question is from Riaz. Does your, is your program applicable to a franchise business? Um, it depends on, well, what type of a franchise business are you looking at? Like, can- Riaz, would you like to unmute? Are we talking food? Actually, you know what? It doesn't really matter what the franchise business is. Okay, it's a it's a it's a coding uh, school for children from age seven to seventeen. Very focused on seven to seventeen age group. Okay, so um, I would say um, depending on the franchise, because uh, franchises have a lot of different rules. Um, so it really looking at where your biggest challenges are, where your biggest struggles are. Is it in the sales and marketing side? Is it in the operations side? Um, we can definitely work around um, the franchise requirements. Because um, I also work with like um, network marketing people too. And depending on what group you're in, it's hard for me to say a generic answer because there are a lot of limitations to some of those. So I would suggest in your case, sign up for the Breakthrough Business Strategy Session. It may be a fit, it may not be a fit, but you'll never know unless you chat with us. Yeah, that, that's wonderful, uh, Nikki. This is, uh, this is, I just uh, cannot explain in words, you know, how much I like. Uh, and I think I can learn. I have already signed up, so probably, uh, you know, uh, you will you will see my you know we'll have a session for going forward thank you excellent i'm i'm a strong believer um i built this program because i recognize that there's a lot of training courses out there mm -hmm. training courses will only take you so far and it's really the one-on-one -on, -one on how to apply that information that you're learning is one of the keys which is why my program is very heavy on the one-on-one -on -one because everybody's scenario is different mm -hmm. the other thing that i found is now that you have that in place the other piece that was missing is the feedback. And it's that feedback, which is why I created the NetCP program that allowed group collaboration. Because even if you build something in isolation, you and I build something, it's only based on two people's opinion. But when you go out and test it is I've provided a safe environment for you to test the information. And I've made it affordable for people to be able to access it. Thank you very much. Thanks, Nikki. Uh, Nikki, it's um, 6.04, so we have to wrap you up. I'm sorry. Uh, on behalf of VBN uh, and the EIN family of meetups, I thank you uh, big time for, the, the, uh, for making a really complicated message very hearable, very simple. Uh, and. Uh, and that is not an easy task. So thank you very, very much. And thank you very much, Roger, for inviting me here. And you have a great group. Those were great questions, by the way. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, okay. and now, if you could stop share, then uh, I will start share and explain to our participants what the next hour is all about. Okay, I did stop share. Oh, you did? Okay, great. Yeah. So Roger, uh, yeah. Roger. I